Welcome back, everyone. This is your Money on Purpose podcast, and I am your host, Donette Palmore. And today, my guest and I will be discussing investing in your business. Uh, my guest today is Stephanie Rigby, and she is an Instagram content mentor who empowers her clients to create authentic content and helps them focus on using Instagram to market their business. She has over 10 years of corporate sales and marketing experience but the nine to five life just wasn't for her. She started her online business after constantly waking up, feeling tired, unhappy, and longing to do more with her life than just trying to climb that good old corporate ladder. Three months later, she went full-time into her business and never looked back. Now she mentors online creatives in creating content that stops their dream clients scroll. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thank you so, so much for being here and being willing to share your story and insight. Absolutely. My pleasure. I think it's so important to share these lessons with people because, you know, we can gain so much insight from someone that's already been through it and we can save ourselves so much time and hassle when we just take those lessons into consideration. So I'm excited to be here. Yes. Yes. And would you prefer Stephanie or Steffi? I think Steffi. That's what everyone Steffi. Wants. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Whatever you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy. <laughs> So I know as a business owner myself, I've invested money in my business and you, you have to, right? So some yeah. of it was a waste of time and money and mm -hmm. some of it was a really great investment. And I think it's important to invest in our businesses and in ourselves. Uh, but sometimes we don't always make the best choices or we don't um, finish or apply what we've learned. And I think it's a struggle for us more often than not. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about a struggle you had in your business regarding money. Uh, you were focused on making that $10,000 a month overnight, right? And you end up investing yes. more money than your business was even making. So can you dig a little deeper into uh, how that came about, maybe what your frame of mind was and how you now use it to empower other women? Yeah. So I would have to say as someone in marketing, I definitely got lured in by marketing. Um, for, and when I say lured in, I don't mean like it was like a ploy or a scam or anything, but you know, I was enticed in by this person's marketing and I thought that the outcomes of the course sounded so great. And primarily the things that I felt like I invested in and didn't get a return on were courses or tools that are mainly DIY that like you buy it and you think, look at all these, you know, templates for Instagram or look at all these, you know, prompts for content ideas, but that doesn't solve the core issue, which is you don't have time to even, you know, edit those templates or anything, you know, that's actually going to get you the results that those things promise. So yeah, I definitely invested a lot more than I earned in my first year in business. And it was just primarily through being convinced by other people that this one thing was going to solve, you know, a specific problem. And it kind of takes you away from actually analyzing the problem more and seeing like, okay, is it actually time management? Is it organization? Like, is it mm. something more than just the fact that I, you know, don't create a lot of content or that, you know, I'm not, uh, like one of the things I invested in was a course in creating, um, a course, basically <laughs> selling a course and it was something I wanted to do. Well, let me just tell you, I ended up creating the course and marketing the course without actually finishing that course on how to <laughs> market the course. Do I think maybe I had been a little, if I had done it, would I have been a little bit more su successful with the course? Maybe, but I also think that there's something to be said about just learning by doing. And no matter how much you, you know, invest time um, and money in actually learning it, whether you actually apply what you've done or not is a whole different story. So mm -hmm. that's just one of the examples of how I, you know, ended up investing and in not necessarily utilizing the product that I invested in. Yeah, I've done that multiple times. I think there's courses I've watched one or two videos or courses I haven't even opened up, but it looked like a great idea. Wow, yeah. this can really get me ahead. This and and one of my things is, hey, it can save me a ton of time. Right. But that's not always true, right? No. <laughs> Cause it's like you have to spend time to then spend more time. You know what I mean? Like right. you have to spend the time to do it to learn how to spend the time to do it. So realistically, it's just a time trade-off. And, you know, sometimes you're better off bypassing the time spent on learning and just do and learn as you do sometimes. But one hack that I wanted to add to like actually feeling like you could 
like feeling like you might get those returns and those investments later down the line. Let's say now three years into my business, looking back at some of those things that I still admit I haven't finished. Now what I try to do is actually, you know, mark time in my schedule for personal development. Mm -hmm. So I go back and actually absorb that knowledge in that course. And now I have a rule that like, if I buy a course or a tool, I have to use it. If I don't use it, then I mean, there is no real consequence, but like I have to, you know, uh, invest that time and really use it. <laughs> yeah. And, and it makes you think, hey, do I have the time to watch these videos? Yeah, yeah. it says it's only two hours, but how long is it going to take me to do it? Right. Yeah. You might get distracted. You might get a phone call midway or, you know, you might have a, an email that you need to set up or you start multitasking and you realize you're not listening to the video. <laughs> you're not following <laughs> along with it. I, but I have to say one success story of a course I did invest in, it was a sales course. I literally, cause I didn't have any clients at the time. I literally actually pretended like I was in class. Um, and I have a whole notebook full of notes from oh, that wow. course. So that was one where I do feel like I actually did utilize it and went through the whole thing but that I think that's the only one where I like completely <laughs> I mean in the beginning that I completely created now every time I invest in a course I do make sure that I complete it but it's a lesson learned <laughs> and you know that's just what life is about lessons learned but I think also we can um, take from what other people have learned and maybe save ourselves some time and money that way as well yes we got to make our own mistakes but we can learn from other people's and make different mistakes, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. I think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. <laughs> so what do you think makes people stop and say, I got to get this course, like this is going to be it. I'm going to have that $10,000 a month. I'm going to, you know, whatever it is that they're searching for. What, what do you think makes them stop and say, and buy the course? I think that it has a lot to do with the marketing tactics, usually psychological marketing tactics that make people, one, idolize the person, and this is a good thing, idolize the person selling the course and, you know, think that I can get their results. I want to be where they are. Um, and I admire this person and I want to be like them or I want to have what they have. Mm -hmm. So that for me was like the number one driver between a lot of things. But, you know, I think one thing we forget is we're not in that person's spreadsheet of their expenses. We're not in that person's like book seeing like, you know, how much they actually bring in a month. I mean, a lot of people are transparent about that or, you know, like to say they make 10K months or six, they're a six figure earner or things like that. But nobody ever really like peels it back and says, this is actually how much I'm paying my team to help me do these things. You know, I don't do my own copywriting. All these people help me with this. And this is what the, you know, expenses for that those services are. And I think that's one thing that obviously you're never going to really have anyone tell you, especially when they're marketing something to you in a sales um, environment. So I think that that's one thing. I think another thing is just they also get at you emotionally where it's like, do you want to change? Like how bad mm -hmm. do you want this to change? And they make it very urgent for you, right? So I think the urgency plus the idolization of that person and also kind of the glitz and glamour that go along with a lot of people marketing courses in particular, especially coaches, you know, I think that that's, those are the two main things that kind of get people when it comes to, you know, buying something like a course. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. I, I hope that somebody listens to this and then will make a course that actually talks about how much team they have behind them doing yeah. stuff that, <laughs> that they're not amazing. doing it all themselves because I think that would take the pressure off of us and be like, right. okay, I can't possibly do all this stuff myself. I have to get help. And so share with us your um, the lessons that you've learned um, investing in your business. What are some takeaways that we can um, hopefully not make those same mistakes? Absolutely. So there are like kind of five key lessons. Um, and this is like a blog post that I've written before. But basically, because this is something that I do talk about a lot, especially when it comes to investing in social media help and, you know, Instagram specific things like content prompts or, you know, um, templates. So basically five lessons I learned about money or investing as an entrepreneur. Um, and this is through three years of experience. So the first thing is every return is dependent on you. So for me, that means like you are responsible for your own return on investment, not necessarily the person you're investing in. Um, and I think that there's a certain amount of accountability and personal accountability that go into actually getting those results and therefore that return on investment. But I also think it's setting a goal for what you want that return on investment to be because mm. oftentimes, you know, when you read a sales page, they will maybe promise you like you can now make 5k a month, but that's not going to necessarily mean that you will make 
5k a month, you have to set the goal for yourself to make 5k a month, you have to figure out what's necessary to do that, then you have to do the lead generation. And there's so many little puzzle pieces that have to go together. So you can't just rely on the course creator or the coach to make you get that result, you really need, you know, to dedicate your time to if it's a group program doing the homework, you know, if they're teaching you, you know, methodology or process, then you have to, you know, absorb that and practice it and, you know, use the processes. So that's like one of my top. Yeah, you got to put in the work, right? (laughs) Yeah, you can't just, you know, turn around and go, oh, this course was a waste of money. I, you know, didn't get the return on the investment from it. Sometimes it won't be a monetary return on investment either. Sometimes it will be, you know, save time or sometimes it will be, you know, learning how to do something so you do things quicker, which equates to save time. So yeah. less, less headaches. So, you know, just really setting your sights on like, what do you want that ROI to be? And also vowing to hold yourself accountable to that. Return. Yeah, that's a good point. Got to yeah. the work. And then the second lesson is not every investment is a good investment. So we just kind of talked about that. Um, And obviously there's a price to pay for being impulsive. And that was something that happened to me in my first year, which is why I ended up spending three times the amount of income I made on courses and, you know, didn't find that out till tax time really until I added it all up. And, you know, I think too, like just kind of going back and looking at how I was so eagerly, you know, lured into things and impulsively purchased courses that I didn't like that I thought I wanted at the time. And then again, just didn't use them or didn't complete them or my business went in a different direction where I didn't necessarily need that thing anymore. So I think just trying to, you know, be wise in what you choose to invest in and just not, you know, jump at the hottest, shiniest looking thing on the market. So what are some things we can use to discern that a little bit, you know, cause yeah, we're here, we're in the marketing, you know, like they got our emotions, they got, we yeah. love this person. They're doing great. What are some ways we can kind of take the emotion out of that? So I think one thing is to really just like be real with yourself and go, you know, if they're saying it's a two hour course, like, can you commit to putting time in your calendar to actually do that course? Like whether it's 30 minutes a day, five minutes a day for two weeks, like, you know, can you really try to commit to doing that? But then also like try to think about, I guess, in addition to that, like what's making, like what is the biggest emotion that's pulling you towards wanting to buy that? Is it, and if it's, if the answer is I want to be like that person or what that person has is what I want, then I think that's a big red flag in a sense, Mm. because you, like you're buying into like comparison syndrome in that sense. And you're basically telling yourself that, you know, you want what someone else has, which isn't always a bad thing, but I also think you need to think about what you want and how realistic is it for you to achieve what they have right now in your business. So a good example of that would just be that there's this woman that was charging three times what I would charge for, you know, her services, but she didn't even offer the same services I offered. She was more of like a marketing coach and I was more content based and helping people, you know, utilize Instagram for their small business. So we didn't even do the same things. So, you know, for me to say, I want to be like her, well, technically I'm not going to ever be like her because we don't even offer the same services. And I was really just buying into the fact that she had earned a certain amount of money in a certain amount of time. And she was marketing, you know, this program or this course as, the, the, the method to which she had been able to done to do that. Right. So, Mm. um, for me, that was really triggering in a, in a good way for her, for me, it was kind of like, Oh, like I had to reevaluate, like, could I actually, you know, be like her? Um, and then the other thing too, is like, if you do offer something completely different, maybe you want to spend more time finding somebody that can offer something that's more tailored to your business in particular. And then the third thing is, you're probably or maybe not at the confidence level right now to actually charge what that person charges. Mm. Therefore, how easy would it be for you to actually get to that income level when you're not necessarily comfortable pitching to a client at that price point, you know, and that's okay. Like I want everyone to know that you'll get there eventually, but you don't have to feel awkwardly forced to do it. So those are some things that I would say to think about first. That that's great. And also I think maybe sleep on it. Yeah. Yeah. Do that, please. <laughs> but they always get you at the countdown, right? Like I you only know. have 24 hours. You got an extra 60 minute call and, and you don't even know what you would want to discuss with that person in that call. It's just right. like, tell me your secrets, right? Like, <laughs> and I think also saying, okay, this, that they're trying to get me on an emotional, you know, buy right now, recognize that 
write down maybe the pros and cons of take, you know, the course, why you would buy it, why you wouldn't and sleep on it. And I, I really like when people put time pressure on me, I really been like, okay, then it's not for me. Like if you're going to force me into a decision, then I'm not going to do it because I don't want to make the wrong decision. And you know what, if the deal comes up later, great. You know, if I decide that's what I want to go and if it doesn't, and that's really, I think going to build me up as a, in my business as a person, then I'll go ahead and invest that money. But I've done so many emotional buying things, courses <laughs> yeah. that I've really had to take a step back and say, okay, it's okay that I don't get that 30 minute call, 60 minute call, whatever. It's okay mm-hmm. that I don't this or that. It's okay that the price is going to go up, but let me think about it because it's going to be a waste of money if I don't do it. Right. Absolutely. And time, if I do do it, it doesn't work for me, but even if I paid a little bit more later, it's okay because I now I know I have the time and the money to do it. So. Absolutely. And I think, you know, talk to that person, like talk to the person that's selling it and also see how genuine they seem when they talk to you, right? Like I think that's a huge, mm. great, like that's a great way to kind of feel out whether there's some red flags or not or if there are more red flags coming up because that person genuinely cares. They're not going to be pushy. They're just going to answer your questions. And I think a lot of times we're afraid to ask questions because then we think that person's going to jump down our throat to sell to us. And I, I don't think we should think of it that way. I think we still have the right to say no no matter how pushy they get and you know if that was happening to me I would just unfollow that person and move on with my life sort of thing so I think it's worth at least you know asking them the questions that are holding you back and and you know don't rush yourself into a decision if you feel like you know you're unsure right up to the last second then that like you should go with your gut and like you said it's probably just telling you that it's not for you right and I loved what you said you have the right to say no yeah remember that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So what is your next lesson that you have for us? Yeah. um, So the next lesson is set an investment budget. So this kind of goes with what we were saying, you know, obviously about spending a ton of money on courses and making sure you need it, set a budget. And then you can also try to figure out like maybe percentage wise, like where you want to allocate that budget, right? Like you can with expenses and, you know, any kind of spending you do for your life or your business. So figure out, you know, Here's, like you said, you could kind of write down a list of the courses that you want to take. um, And then you could kind of say, you know, you could write how much they are. And then you could try to figure out like, okay, if I have $500 to invest this month, and one of these, like each of these courses costs three to $500, then try to weigh kind of like the outcomes or the major benefits of that course. And when you really think about it like that way in a methodical kind of manner, then you actually are doing the analyzation that you wouldn't when you're being pulled in by those marketing emotions. Right. So, um, I think that just kind of making a list of like what you want to, what you want to invest in and then seeing where the budget fits with those things, maybe you go a little bit over budget if you can afford to stretch the budget a tiny bit. But I think that makes you then over, over analyze in a good way where you actually want to put that money and make sure that it goes to better use. And, you know, the more thought you put into it, the more you're probably going to care about the outcome. Right, right. And and the less emotional buy you're going to do. Absolutely. <laughs> and I started to do that in my second year of business because the first year I was frivolously just like, here, here, here. And I think, you know, if I, and if, if I take the total amount that I spent, I could have spent that on a good one-to-one coaching program or a good group program. But I kept shying away from those and buying more smaller priced packages or courses. And then it just ended up being the same price anyways. So, you know, right? I could have just, you know, split that over six months or whatever it is for, for, for a coaching program. And I probably would have got more out of it and had the accountability that I didn't realize I needed from the beginning. That that's a good point too, because we think, Oh, it's just a couple here, a couple hundred here, there, there. Oh, I can't go with that coach because they are so much money, but you end up again, spending (laughs) the same amount of money, if not more (laughs) for less of a quality of an outcome that you would want. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's super important. Something I, I say, I think about too, when I'm thinking about a course or, or something like that, thinking about how many clients do I need to obtain to get that course? Like, yeah. what is it really going to cost me with my time as well? Definitely. Yeah. That's a good point. And you can, yeah, you can look at that from a sales perspective and and kind of like an accounting perspective in a sense or a budgeting perspective of like, okay, well, if I want to spend this much money, I need to make this much money. And then, you know, really start focusing on how you're going to make the money so that you can spend a portion of it sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, I think that's great. 
Um, and then the next lesson is, so number four is big, scary investments are typically more worthwhile. So mm. literally what we just touched on. Um, again, I just feel like there's a reason why things are more expensive and it's because you're going to get more accountability, more value out of it, more high touch from the person that's holding the program. Typically they are programs, not, you're not going to buy unless you're buying it from like a really famous person like Tony Robbins, you're not going to, you know, invest thousands in that course per se. So I think, you know, again, setting your budget, but then maybe trying to figure out like, like we just said, like instead of spending, you know, $500 on five courses, maybe I just spend $5,000 or $10,000 on this one high touch program, because here are the main outcomes that I think that I would get from that versus buying these individual courses to teach me to do each of those things. So, yeah. and I think one thing too, is that you, that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you're paying that money for someone else's expertise. That one-on-one -on -one is just priceless. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you something that the course itself, you know, watching the online course can't do. Yeah. And even, you know, even when people offer, sometimes they offer like Voxer access or like voice note coaching um, on top of like things like intensives or um, a course or whatever it is like, that's great. But at the end of the day, like I want to be able to talk to the person face to face in a sense. Right. And like, obviously everything is virtual anyways, but like if you could even invest in like a in-person mindset or mastermind, imagine like what you would get out of that besides just the coaching, like you'd get to network with people. And a lot of the times when you invest in these things, you're investing in a new community, a new support system, a new circle of people that have been through or going through what you've been through. So like you, you know, you expand your thinking, but you also, you know, benefit in terms of all these other little things that you wouldn't get from a course even if you're in a free Facebook community people aren't as active in those so I'd rather be in a tight-knit mastermind group or group program um, community than just a free group I think yeah yeah I I can get that it's like you have to have some buy-in right some it's got to yeah. cost you something and then people are going to show up yeah. And then also like there's intrinsic value, like things that aren't obviously necessarily marketed to you, but you have to think like, oh, I'm going to get this from that program, you know, like that support of other people. You might meet a client. You never know. Right. So. It's all about definitely. connections. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely it's definitely worth, um, you know, looking at the big, scary ones and kind of trying to go like into your mindset and think like, OK, what's holding me back here um, and then figure out, you know, what kind of problems. And it's pretty obvious from the sales page most times. But just thinking within yourself, you know, what like do I need accountability to get this problem solved? Most of the time you do. So, yeah, that's a. It's a huge That's true <laughs> recommendation. Then the last one, which we sort of talked about when we talked about setting a budget, but it's doing expense audits. So doing that mm. quarterly. So I like to go through, and this, this isn't necessarily related to investing, but you are investing when you buy things for your business, whether it's, you know, Zoom or Planoly or, you know, um, Canva or any of those things. So I like to go through and kind of look at which expenses am I utilizing, you know, right now, which ones am I using less, using more of, and I like to kind of just go through and audit, you know, what I'm getting out of it. Do I really need it? Do I need to pay for the pro version version? Could I get just like the basic free version? Is there another competitor of this program or this uh, tool? I mean, that, you know, I could just use their free version and things like that, because it allows you to free up space to then add more to your investment budget if you want, or hire, you know, invest in help or hire an independent contractor to help with things. So I think it's really important to just reevaluate every so often where you're actually spending your money. Mm. Yes. I love that. And hopefully you're keeping track monthly <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and yeah. you're looking at it more often so that you can kind of, um, gauge that. Um, so how do you use your business to empower other women? Because I think women are, and this isn't putting women down. It's just the way we are. We're just, we buy emotionally. Yeah. Um, what, how do you help them to maybe take that emotion out and really empower them to, um, invest in the right things in their business. Yeah. So the way I like to do that is just being very frank 
with people in general when it comes to my marketing and when I speak on social media and I'm always, you know, sharing my own experiences, making it really clear again, lessons that I've learned to help other people learn from my lessons, you know, even maybe asking people the hard questions like, you know, are you really going to use this or why do you feel like you need this? One thing I, you know, often have to talk people off the ledge of is going viral on social media, for example. And a lot of people will invest money in things thinking it's going to help them go viral when, you know, really they're just chasing after something they're never going to really achieve. So, you know, I, I, I like to empower people by helping change the way they think about things um, and also helping them get to the mindset behind why they're feeling that way, you know, and a lot of it is illusion. And we're drawn in by the sparkle and shine of Instagram and how great everyone looks on Instagram. But you have to look behind the scenes and, you know, try to peek behind the curtains as much you can and as much as you can or try to at least discern from what you see, you know, what you think is real and what you think is fake and try not to buy in to the glitz and glamour of it all. Yeah. And then maybe talk to some of their customers or clients, right? Try to find out people that have taken their programs or courses and, you know, did it work for them? Didn't it work? What the pros and the cons, like those things um, and not be afraid to ask questions. That'll help us kind of back out of the emotion part of it as well. Um, you know, because we can, money is also emotion. So, you know, we, <laughs> yeah, and we could just be impulsive about stuff and not even really realize it, but then we're, we're regretting it later. Like, oh my gosh, I spent that $500 on that course. I didn't even take it. I'm so upset. Right. And obviously you can't return a course. It's not like, you know, the purse, you can maybe go return, but you can't return right. <laughs> the course. Um, but to really dig out and do your research, I think that's, that's a really important piece. Um, speaking of, you know, the glitz and the glam, there was, um, these people, they opened up this company and they brought in these, um, uh, TikTok influencers. Um, they, they spent like 50 grand on this party to build uh, up this business. Okay. Their TikTok got about 11 followers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So $50,000, 11 followers. I don't see the ROI on that. Yeah, I don't, not <laughs> but, now. It's you know, talk about while. being caught up in that emotion of it, that, yeah. that glitz, that glam and how much it mm-hmm. costs them. Um, you know, that was, that was an expensive lesson, but I'm sure they learned yes. a lot from it. And um, hopefully today, you know, these five lessons, this conversation is going to help you to make decisions a little bit better. You know, when we get caught up in, you know, we got to have that course, we got to have that product, we got to have this or that, whatever it is, but really taking a step back because not only can it cost us money, but it can cost us time, which time we can't get back. We can make more money. We can't get time back. And that's really, really precious. Um, and it can help us from making, you know, squirreling off or, or making a big mistake in our business. Um, and I think that's really important. So, so thank you, Steph, Steffi, so much for coming and sharing these lessons with us. If um, somebody wants to get a hold of you, um, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at your content bestie, i.e. on the end of bestie. Um, I usually come up once you type in your content. Um, and you can also reach me at www.yourcontentbestie.com. That is my website. And I'm always happy to chat about anything regarding Instagram, or if you want to chat more about worthwhile social media investments, I'm mm, your girl. Thanks I for having that. me. <laughs> and we'll have all that down in the notes. So you guys don't have to worry about writing it down. You can just um, get it down in the notes. And I think you also have a freebie for uh, the audience. What are you giving away? Yes. So I am giving away my Reels audios. So I have a list of trending Reels audios um, and they are easy to find. You can click the link in my bio or you can find them from your show notes, I believe. Um, And basically what that is, is every week I go through and find the most trending Reels audios. And this is a great way to increase your invisibility, your visibility and reach on Instagram. Um, If you do make Reels or if you're looking to just start, you can kind of pick some from the list that you feel like are easy to do and try your hand at them. So I yeah. love that. I have a great time making reels. Well, They're thank fun. you guys. <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here. I'm so honored that you guys take your time and listen to this podcast. My name is Donette Palmore, and I'm on a mission to empower you to give your money more purpose so you can live your purpose. Thank you for listening to your money on purpose podcast. If you got value out of this episode, 
I would be forever grateful if you would leave a review and then hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to your podcast so that you never miss an episode. Thank you again for being here. And until next time, remember money is just a tool that we get to use to live out our purpose.